If you like my videos and want to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Thank you. If you're old enough to have experienced the golden age of arcades, then you will no doubt recognize a certain movie from that era. This was a movie that melded together special effects and science fiction to create the perfect storm. This was a movie that was released in 1982 and forever changed the way we view cinematography. No, I'm not talking about Tootsie, I'm talking about Tron. Today, we are going to discuss the movie and the arcade game from Bally Midway. What is Discs of Tron and how does it factor into our story? So jump in your light cycle and get ready to battle because this is the history of Tron, the arcade game. The year is 1981 and development is well underway on the movie Tron. Tron was a movie released in 1982 that featured the very first extensive use of CGI in a movie. It was essentially a video game come to life. The plot revolves around Flynn, the main character who gets sucked into his own program and has to fight for his life to try to escape in a series of tests or mini-games, as it were. I was 10 when the movie came out, and I absolutely loved the special effects. And doing my research for this video, I went back and watched the movie for the first time in probably 25 years and enjoyed it more as an adult than I did as a little kid. It's a little slow starting out, but it picks up about 25 minutes in. The movie was a moderate success and was very influential for up-and-coming directors such as Pixar's John Lasseter. The arcade game would actually earn more revenue than the movie itself, but more on that in just a bit. In the fall of 1981, Valley Midway was approached by Disney to see if they wanted the contract to complete a game based on their upcoming movie. Valley Midway were absolute legends in the arcade scene. They had produced Wizard of War, Satan's Hollow, and Bump and Jump. The higher-ups at the company went to programmer Bill Adams, who had informed me that he almost didn't take the job due to the time constraints. But when two different development teams were assigned to come up with ideas, he decided to give it a shot. His development team received a script, a few pieces of concept art, and some very early test reels of the CGI. They had created their own cardboard cutouts to represent the various minigames such as the tanks, light cycles, etc. Disney had wanted six minigames to be available, but with such a tight deadline they could only manage to squeeze in four. One of the other minigames became the Discs of Tron standalone arcade game which was released 18 months later. One stipulation was that it had to be completed by March of 1982. Disney had wanted the game in arcades four months before the movie's premiere. Mr. Adams had hired three new programmers to help out and was able to meet the deadline. Tron was released by Bally Midway in 1982. The first thing you noticed when you walked into an arcade back in 1982 were the bright neon colors emanating from this gorgeous arcade cabinet. The controls had a very unique setup. Most arcade games at the time featured a combination of either a joystick, a button, or a trackball. Tron has a flight yoke outfitted with a fire button and also a spinner to change the direction of your firing. Flight yokes were usually reserved for flying games, but this was the same design found in the arcade game Gorf. Spinners were primarily used in games like Arkanoid. The game is split into four minigames per level. Once all four minigames were completed, a new level opens up with a higher difficulty. The most iconic of the four minigames would have to be the light cycles. This was my absolute favorite game back in the day and is very reminiscent of the game Snake. The cycles will leave colored trails which you have to avoid at all costs. In order to win, you have to trap your opponents within your trails. Battle Tanks is very similar to the Atari 2600 game Combat. In this one, you use the flight yoke to control your tank and the spinner will change the direction of your turret. You have to take out the three enemy tanks all the while avoiding their missiles. The third and fourth games feature a similar setup only with a human avatar instead of a vehicle. 
an IO tower, you have to avoid the grid bugs while trying to get into the tower. And finally, an MZP goon, you have to blast a path through the defenses in gameplay that is similar to Breakout. You control the character with the flight yoke and rotate his arm with the spinner. After you complete all four minigames, the difficulty increases and the game repeats. The graphics are very detailed and are reminiscent of the same color style as the movie. This game is another of my favorite arcade games of my youth. It's a bit short. That's what she said. But back in 1982, that's what was to be expected of an arcade game. A pure, fast adrenaline rush for about five minutes. It's still a great game though. There were over 10,000 arcade cabinets sold by the end of 1983, generating over $30 million in revenue. The arcade game generated more money than the movie itself. 18 months later, Discs of Tron was released into the arcades. This was the fifth game that was supposed to be included in the original Tron, but the developers ran out of time and had to release it as a separate game. In one of the scenes taken straight out of the movie, the player hurls discs at each other. You either hit enemy players or attempt to knock him off of his disc. The gameplay is reminiscent of the game Squash. The game was released during the great video game crash of 1983, so not a lot of cabinets were sold. If you ever see the full size cabinet, be sure to check it out because it uses surround sound to really put you in the middle of the game. As for home conversions of these games, while the Atari 2600 was king, there is no way it could compete with the graphics and sound found in the arcade game. A couple of different games were released for the 2600 that were Tron related including The Adventures of Tron and Tron Deadly Discs. For the Intellivision, Tron Deadly Discs was released as well as Mazatron. The graphics and gameplay were considerably better on these versions. Speaking of Tron games, I wanted to mention a toy I had when I was a kid. Tron from Tomy is a handheld game that featured three different scenes from the movie. It featured light cycles, flying disc which is similar to Pong and Squash, and then finally the player has to throw his disc into the heart of the MCP. For a handheld game, this was fantastic for its time. You also get the aesthetically pleasing housing which is reminiscent of the actual arcade game. I wanted to say a big thank you to Mr. Bill Adams for answering some of the questions I had regarding the development of this game. And there you have it, a look back at one of my favorite games of my youth. It's another of those games that's very difficult to play on an emulator such as MAME due to the controls involved. Now it is possible to use the keyboard instead of a spinner or even the right stick of an Xbox or PS4 pad, but it's just not quite the same. So if you ever see the cabinet out in the wild, drop a few quarters in, you'll be glad you did. If you like this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Also, be sure to give me a like, give me a share, and also subscribe. It's the only way my channel can grow. Thanks for watching.